It allows me to be a full-time skier and do the Vail Ski and Snowboard Academy program, but go to VMS. It helps me make up my work that I miss from skiing in the mornings or when I'm at races. Um, I think VMS just has really good infrastructure to allow skiers to um, be able to be on snow full-time, but also uh, be in a college prep environment. Miss Pavlik really talks about, you know, in the summer, about what the winter season looks like in terms of the amount of time that's being missed. Has really done a good job of explaining the your schedule and also the after-school tutoring program so that teachers know how to communicate best with students. And then we've also really been trained on how to use Haiku as a way to post information, keep track of what's happening in particular classes so that when you miss a class, you know what you have to miss as opposed to coming and right. finding that information. I think VMS prepares teachers for this ski program just by saying that there is a ski program um, and that we, we get the list early on about who's gonna be in the ski program, how many students that we have, and, and really when it's gonna start up. Um, and I think some teachers have curriculums that they know that, okay, this is what I'm gonna be teaching during that ski season time for the most part, um, so that those some of those students can kind of test out of that area. So right around the middle to end of April, uh, usually everyone takes a few weeks off so their body can recover from uh, the past season. And then right around late April, early May, dryland starts up. Um, that means that <clears throat> me and other athletes are working out, lifting weights about four times a week if they're doing another sport, um, and it can go up to five times or six times a week if they're not doing another sport. I would most likely be doing three to four lifting sessions a week, uh, mostly done after or before school. That training block uh, blends into summer camps, so while we're training four or so hours a day, um, then we go off to summer camps like uh, Mount Bachelor, uh, where we ski five hours a day and uh, do dry land for two hours a day. I have for the past few years been uh, completing English over the summer and be have been doing math independently over the summer. Um, this allows me to uh, slow down my pace in math over uh, the winter and it allows me to miss uh, English class over the winter. I record every single one of my lessons. Here is that every single one of my lessons is online. I'm really up to date with Haiku. I email every single student exactly what they missed every day. Um, so I really put it on them. But I've put so much out there that if they come ask and say, oh, I don't understand 9.2, I'm like, well, have you watched the video yet and done that? And if they say no, then I'm like, okay, that's our first step. If they say yes, I'm like, okay, now let's see where we need to go from there. Better communication from students and athletes. The policy regarding making up work uh, for skiers is disadvantageous to arriving for school. More of uh, communication with the teachers. I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the program at BMS currently. It allows me to travel a ton and um, still be in really good places in all my classes.
communication is absolutely the key. Yeah, I, I think I think frequent communication is the key, and using using the the structures that are already in place, like using haiku effectively. And I think that the using haiku effectively comes from teachers and from students. Um, I think I think that can be a really really useful tool if it's utilized. Communication. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's that's the key. I think empathy, understanding that the ski racers are being pulled in two directions. Their academic teachers really want them to be the best students possible, and their club coaches want them to be the best ski racers possible. <laughs>